you need to understand that every compliment cascade needs to have checkpoints, right? If your checks and balances are not in order, you'll have an over-activated complemented cascade, right? So what blocks your C3 converters? It is a something known as a factor H, okay? Factor H, basically what it does, it blocks off the action of C3 converters, okay? So for instance, if somebody had a problem with factor B or factor H, what's going to happen? Your C3 converters, because factor H's main job is to prevent C3 converters from working. It inhibits it, right? It inhibits C3 converters. So if I take off factor H, what do I have? I have an overactive C3 converters, which is going to convert C3 to C3A, C3B, produce all of your C5 through C9 and membrane attack complex. So you have an overactive complement cascade. Why? because of problem with either factor H or factor B. Both of that, if there's a problem with it, you have an overactivated complement cascade. Now, you can have a problem with factor H and factor B because of a genetic defect, or you can have antibody against them that's making it happen. Okay? Either way, in this scenario, you will activate complement cascade, and the complement is going to come and deposit in your subendothelial space, and do the exact same damage as the previous time because it's a complement mediated injury and it's going to cause a chronic subendothelial injury that's going to sustain so much that it's going to form a false basement membrane and essentially cause a tram tacking appearance.